Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture, and tourism in Tokyo. My name is Stuart Minori, a long term resident of the city, and each week day around this time I'll bring news and views from Japan. And as the prospect of travel draws ever closer, I'll also note changes in travel as and when they happen. North Korea fired a ballistic missile over the Japanese archipelago for the first time in five years on Tuesday, reaching the longest distance for a missile launched by Pyongyang. Japan's Defense Minister Yasukazu Hamada commented that North Korea's missile flew 4,600 kilometers, putting it well within reach of Guam, a key island within US territory. Tuesday's missile launch was North Korea's fifth in 10 days and previously fired missiles on Saturday in an apparent protest against joint naval drills held last week between the US and South Korea. Since the start of this year, Pyongyang's repeatedly conducted missile tests in violation of UN Security Council resolutions, after a hiatus of almost four months, apparently due to an outbreak of COVID-19. It's also been stepping up its provocations after Vice President Camilla Harris's trip to South Korea, during which she visited the demilitarized zone bordering the two Koreas. Far from the Korean peninsula, Dogo Onsen Honkan, Japan's oldest hot spring and the first to be designated a Japanese property of national and cultural importance in 1994, is found to the east of Matsuyama City in Ehime Prefecture on Shikoku, the smallest of Japan's four main islands. The present day Honkan or main building is a three-story wooden structure originally designed by Matahachiro Sakamoto, a craftsman from a family of master carpenters who all worked on Matsuyama Castle. This grand three-tiered building is crowned by a square cupola called the Shinrokaku, featuring windows made with Giyaman glass, apparently a corruption of the word diamond because of the way the glass sparkles, like a diamond surprisingly enough, and a roof adorned with a sculpture of the egret heron which according to local legend was the first animal to bathe within the Dogo Hot Spring. The Honkan has two bathing areas, Tamanoyu and Kaminoyu, along with private rooms and lounges on the upper floors. Yet the onsen's been under renovation since 2019, while bathing spaces reopened last July, albeit in limited fashion. The Karahafu, a type of curved gable found in Japanese architecture, is still visible even when most of the building is wrapped in scaffolding with a temporary roof. But just enough of the building pokes out for it to be caught by passing eyes. The stone bathing rooms of Kaminoyu are adorned with Tobe porcelain panel paintings and baths feature large column-shaped water spouts called Yugama. Bochan no Ma, meaning Bochan's room, is a second floor private room said to have been used in 1895 by the poet Masuo Koshiki and by Natsume Soseki, author of Bochan, following Soseki's arrival for his new post in Matsuyama earlier that year, not long after the Honkan was renovated in 1894. In 1996, the room was named Bochan's room by Soseki's son-in-law, the author Matsuoko Yuzuru. In celebration of Matsuyama, Dogo Onsen Honkan is also part of Dogo Onsen Art, a 10-month-long festival which began this April and ends next February in 2023, introducing a series of collaborations between the city and artists, makers and poets all tasked with enlivening different parts of the Dogo district. But the showpiece is the Honkan itself, now wrapped with an enlarged painting by the local artist Shinro Otake. Energy Scape is a collage work wrapped as hoarding around the temporary scaffold covering the main building, and features a collage of the local landscape, egret herons, and water which Otake describes as eternally gushing forth. That's all for now. 
I'll be back tomorrow, Thursday the 6th, with more news and views. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts, or even think about spreading the word online. But for now, thanks for listening. This has been Noteball.